Uh, Noriega, who's, you know, it's kind of like a monk. I mean, now, now he's demonized, and he's, you know, 40 years in jail and so on. But in fact, he was a kind of a minor thug. I mean, he was a thug and a killer and a narco trafficker and so on. But by the standards of the guys we support, he's, you know, not particularly noticeable. Uh, the, uh, in fact, there was just a trial. Of, for, he was just tried in Panama for one of his worst crime, alleged worst crimes, killing a Fugo Spotafora. Uh, spot, uh, spot you know, a guy was decapitated, the dissident found some body somewhere, everybody assumed Noriega did it. Uh, and Noriega was just tried for that, and to everybody's amazement, they didn't convict him in Panama, which caused a big furor. Uh, and in fact, though you won't read it in the American press, if you read the conservative business press in Central America, you'll discover that the federal prosecutor had a theory, which he was, it was sort of the theory of the prosecution, uh, that in fact Noriega was involved, but he was involved as a CIA agent uh, who was trying to get rid of this guy because he was questioning the, uh, you know, war in Nicaragua. So uh, to get back to Noriega, he was on the American payroll, you know, as a thug and a murderer and a narco trafficker though, of a minor type uh, until uh, about the early 80s. Uh, in 1984, in fact, uh, there was an election in Nicaragua which Noriega just stole by violence, quite a lot of violence, in fact. The wrong guy was going to win. The guy who was going to win is somebody called a, na he was a conservative nationalist, but somewhat independent, and the United States didn't like him, and wanted some other guy to get in, who in fact was a former student of George Schultz's, his name is uh, uh, Barletta, I think his name was, for, uh, forgotten. Anyway, he was the guy who was supposed to win, and the thing was arranged so that he did win. Uh, the Reagan administration, which secretly subsidized his campaign, uh, sent him uh, congratulations seven hours before the election results were announced. Uh, George Schultz then flew down to authorize the, uh, uh, the great achievement, you know, challenging the Sandinistas to meet our high standards of democracy. That was 1984. You know, we're still not only supporting Noriega, but cheering him on, you know, when he destroys elections by violence and kills people and so on and so forth. Uh, well, around a year or two later, the attitude began to shift. The problem was that the thug was getting a little too independent. You know, thugs are fine. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's a minor one like Noriega or a major, major one like Saddam Hussein, or for that matter, Hitler, who we also supported for a time. Uh, they're fine, you know, as long as they follow orders. Uh, but if they become independent, they become as bad as priests who were organizing Bible study groups. Then they're bad guys and you got to get rid of it. So about 1986, 1987, the U.S. shifted its attitude toward Noriega, and instead of becoming sort of a nice guy on our side, uh, he became, as Ted Koppel and, you know, those guys called him, you know, one of the most odious creatures in the world, you know, the kind of people the United States, Americans love to hate, and so on and so forth. Major propaganda campaign was concocted to turn him into a sort of a Hitlerian figure, uh, and that was all a build-up to the invasion of Panama, which incidentally, remember, was George Bush's celebration of the end of the Cold War. The invasion of Panama took place about a month after the Berlin Wall fell, uh, and we were condemned by the United Nations. You know, the United States had to beat those two Security Council resolutions and so on, uh, but they moved in. Uh, they, there's big furor about the fact that Noriega had stolen an election, which was true, although with much less violence than in the one in 84 that we endorsed. But this time, he wasn't just following orders, so we invaded Panama, you know, killed however many people and destroyed what we felt like, and instored, installed a regime of bankers and narco-traffickers and uh, other crooks who everyone concedes, including the government, wouldn't stay in office for 10 minutes unless they had American force behind them. Uh, and the country's going down the tube, as you'd expect, and narco-traffic, drug, drug laundering has about doubled since then. But they did kidnap Noriega and brought him here for trial. And if you look at the trial, the charges against him were virtually entirely from the period when he was on CIA payroll. Uh, 